Oh yeah! We have a macho moment coming up here! A Lucha Underground! Yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah! And thank you for watching. My name is Hobo Tom. Of course, we are watching the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. A wrestling YouTube thing. Uh, my girlfriend, I think she might be working tomorrow. So she's back at her place. We'll see more of her eventually. Don't, don't worry about that, folks. Um, I'm here to talk about Lucha Underground. Ooh, yeah! There's a little madness in the air. Yeah! Whoa. Now, this was a really fun Lucha Underground. I'll tell you what. They do not disappoint. No. They would never show up to Daytona Beach. That would be cool. Though. But you never know. Maybe Impact will, maybe Impact Wrestling will come to Daytona Beach next. I always hope. Long as Johnny Mundo's there, it's going to be a little bit of like, yeah. So to start off the show, this is Lucha Underground. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, some programming notes. I know on Saturday I'm doing a live stream. So I'll post that probably at the times later on this week. Um, Monday I have my normal show. Tuesday. Well, well, Monday's Raw, Tuesday's SmackDown. Again, because of my disputes with Spectrum, Evil Spectrum. I do my Lucha Underground on Sundays. Wait, right, next week's Lucha Underground. Yeah, I'll get that done Sunday probably. It won't be it won't be it'll be late though. Or Friday maybe. We'll see. But yeah, let's get to Lucha uh, and then also SummerSlam on Sunday. I don't know. I might be going fishing. It might have me working again. Yeah, I don't think I've had a weekend off in like a month and a half. Get back to work! Or you're fired! Again, let's talk about Lucha Underground. This was actually really fun. Lucha Underground just does not disappoint. And as you've seen, I do have a little bit more production value. I have one light on. Dark now. Um, but let's start off. You have the Rabbit Tribe of Paul London, Mal Suerte, and Salsador. Um, oh, I forget his name. Cuerno Senior, I guess. Call him that. Um, says he, Paul London has to choose one person for the sacrifice. And that was Molly Suerte. Um, so start off Moss Word versus Batanza. I mean, any squash match really is going to be a ham sandwich. The heck was that? I still have my own production stuff. I have to get rid of this stuff. Why isn't it going away? I don't know. Again, Miles Huerta. Again, it's a really quick squash. It had like in like cartoony sound effects. It was okay. I mean, at, at the end, again, it was a squash mask. Matanza gives them the Wrath of the Gods body slam or power slam, whatever it is. And, and and that's it. You know, I need to get. Gosh darn! I get. Uh, uh, uh. Next time I'll be better, maybe. <laughs> Again, 
<laughs> Which Underground Santa Claus a hobo production. But, so the second match of the night was Joey Ryan and Jack Evans versus Exolicious and All Right Everything. Ivelisse. Which I guess she, she she pulls off the all red look better than than Eva Marie did at least. I had to think about that for a while. It's been a while since anyone's ever mentioned Eva Marie. I think she dyed her hair black. I don't know. She did once eliminate Asuka from a woman's battle royal or royal rumble. Something like that. Again, this was a fun match. And if you're going to put together a fun match that's, that's an inter, that's a mixed gender, intergender tag team match, you're going to get, again, the old production cheeseburger. Okay. Where's my production team? This cheeseburger has to go away. How do I get cheeseburgers out of here? I don't know. Maybe this will save it for the card. Next time it'll be better. But yeah, this was a really fun match. Joey Ryan is just fun. I mean, he's mastered the art of mixed mag or mixed gender tag team matches. Jack Evans, darn, he's good. Um, <laughs> there was the one spot. There goes the lollipop. Started to chant, show he likes it. <laughs> Forget if I caught it on t on on tape. It's when Exolicious pulls Joey Ryan's face into his butt. The crowd started to chant, Joey likes it. And of course, Joey and I has the greatest facial expressions. And then Exolicious again, he 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 does that Matrix stuff. That's cool. He Matrix Jack Evans. Jack Evans, darn can he sell? Darn can he talk? Um, again, it was really fun. Uh, Joey Ryan and Jack Evans wins. Jack Evans put Exolicious in a go go playa or, or some other jujitsu move and would not let go. Exolicious kind of passes out, does not tap out, which is, which is good. I'm like this cheeseburger, which is going to, to go, go away now. We have production value here on the show. But again, it was a fun match. And Joey Ryan, he has the great heel moves. I mean, he knows how to be a tag team wrestler, especially a heel tag team wrestler. He's good. This led to the, th actually, I'm shocked, the third match of the night. I mean, yeah, granted it was a squash match at the beginning. This one, uh, the past match with the all red everything. Evil East was probably about 10, 15 minutes. Um, you have Dragon Azteca Jr. versus Mariposa. You know, it's mixed. 
on that kick out, if we can get a shot yet, my post is definitely feeling the effects of the punishment of El Dragon Azteca. We talked about the bloodlines. There's so many young wrestlers that are, that are coming up right now. My, my question to you is how important is it to have that bloodline in you? Hang on, cover here. Does it make someone a better wrestler if they're second, third, or fourth generation or not? I mean, the advantage is in your, the ball's in your court, right? Because you're growing up in it, your dad's going to take you to the gym, your dad's going to take you to the dressing room, you're going to get used to that environment from a young age, you don't get scared from, you know, the chair shots, the fighting, so yeah, it makes a big, big difference, plus, you want to make your pops proud, right? So, that has a lot to do with it. Wow. Sends body posted down, the dragon has a lot of space to cover here. Hey, but he's, it's taking his toll on him, look at him, he's, he's wobbly, I mean, she's put up a good fight. You better not get cocky. El Dragon Azteca, the man who had realized his dream, is now looking to take it one step further to make it a reality, to go to Ultima Lucha Cuatro, to become Lucha on the Ground Champion. I could not believe it, but this was a flaming young match. Lucha Underground, I mean, even though it's a mixed match, and it was for the Gift of the Gods belt. By the way, that's the belt that I want to have. That thing's huge. It, it, you look like a walking championship. I mean, that's amazing. Again, you have the great heel tactics by Mariposa. Goes to shake the hand. Kicks him down beneath the belt. With the referee's back turn, by the way. Again, classic heel tactics. And never shake a heel's hand. Isn't that what they teach you in, like, Wrestling 105 heel and face interactions? Um, even though it's a mixed category, it feels like a great wrestling match. There's no, there's no awkwardness. Um, yeah, there's some heavy strikes, but it's done by both. And it's that kind of sense of competition. So it's not personal, it's not over the top, unlike Minoru Suzuki. Although there are rumors Asuka said, yeah, just, just, just slap the heck out of me. And to her credit, she might have. But again, it was, it was a really fun match. Um, and Dragon Azteca, I mean, he pulled like a Prince Puma doing like a 450 splash. I mean, it was really good. Mari Pose is one tough chick because you can't see it in my videos, but she has like some nasty bruise right on her collarbone. I don't think it was from. I know they do target the collarbone versus the jaw, especially with forearms. And the way feet fall and other things happen, hey, she gets all the credit in my book. She's one tough chick. You're number one in my book, Mari Pose. That and you have big boobies and a belly button piercing. And then we get to the world, get to the main event, the Worldwide Underground versus the Reptile Tribe. And I, I couldn't believe it. This was great. I mean, with the Reptile Tribe, I mean, obviously they killed off Vibrio last episode. So it was, so as. A fourth person in like some atomic match. I don't know. You either get one wish or you have to join or, or you have to join the other tribe. Whatever. Mm. You had Jeremiah Snake, who got resurrected as like the zombie. And then again, Johnny Mundo's awesome because he's like, you know what, Ricky Mundo? Go play with your doll in the back. And he says, we have our own surprise for you. Aerostar comes up, the former tag team partner of Drago. <laughs> Ricky, go play with your girl. Aerostar, haven't seen him in a while. I mean, the match started off really as a giant schmoz. Aerostar just takes out everyone. Hmm. 
This is a solution. Never saw that before. Okay, so he's got some issues right off the bat. He's not all there. He's got some creepiness built into him since day one, since right out of the gate when he was born. You know, a lot of people don't know that Lucifer or Satan, that's a title. That's not a name. Satan was a title of a bodyguard for the Lord in the old, 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 old Testament. <laughs> Again, I do credit Simon Miller for that. I've learned my copyright stuff. Again, it was just really fun. Crane and Mundo were actually started off in the ring. Amazing action. You have the Lucha flying. I mean, some moves I never even saw before. That's the fun thing. You don't, you don't know what you're going to get from Lucha Underground. Nine times out of ten, it's really darn good. I mean, it's not like a WWE or something. Same, same, same. And I don't care what John, is, John Cena says. Five moves of death or six moves of death. It's the same thing. But yeah, it was really good. I mean, then Jeremiah Snake with a running bone pins things. And, um... Taya flashes out. Oh, you can't, you can't do that. Beep. Clash of the middle finger and Jeremiah Crane right hit. Yeah, classic Jeremiah Crane. That was good stuff. <laughs> they started going worldwide. Whoop, whoop. That's a fun crowd. You got to like them. And it finally became kind of a formal match. PJ Black's good. I don't think there's a bad wrestler on the Lucha Underground Cardinal list unless you're really some, some dopey jobber there for one show to be a sacrifice. Do that for 50 bucks. Then, this is a great tandem offense. This is tag team wrestling at its kind of old school, but at its best. They tandem work, and they know how to work together. Um... I mean, just fun. Uh, the Worldwide under, Underground did go over. Johnny Mundo was granted his wish. He gives the Aerostar. And it was to free Drago. So, Aerostar... Again, for a while, it's Aerostar versus Drago in the ring. I mean, Aerostar gets, gets the wish. He free, frees Drago. They, 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 along with Penta, with Pentagon Jr., Phoenix. Ooh. I could go back. I think at one time it was Aerostar, Drago, and Phoenix, I think, were at one time trios champions. I think, but then Ty is all upset. So PJ Black does the classic wrestling maneuver. 
Johnny Mundos points over to PJ Black. PJ Black starts kind of feeling up parts of his trunk. Oh, wait, I know where it is. Oh! Pulls out a ring. Taya goes crazy. And we have some macho madness going on, yeah! <laughs> Down the trunks. <laughs> PJ Black is awesome. Down the trunks. Wait, that's some Macho Man's music. And then again, there's a really freaky ending with with a uh, Ricky Monday. He looks like the Macho Man. He pulls a Macho Man. Whoa, Ty almost fell there for a second. It's the Macho Man music. Wait a second. Yeah, this was a really fun episode again of Lucha Underground. It's so hard for Lucha Underground to really just fun. Of course, because Johnny Mundo. I have to give the shout out to the Macho Man there. Yeah! They played Pomp and Circumstance minus the OEX. I'm sure the WWE has a copyright on it. And that's at least the ooh yeah part. Then he carries around. I um, don't tie on his shoulder like a macho man with Elizabeth. Sort of ties a little bit bigger though. And Ty almost showed her parts and just not Johnny Mundo. It's everyone else. Hammerman, you gotta be careful with that. Oh, 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 yeah. Um but again it's a fun amazing show. Again, so I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. Also, you can feel free to email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Um, probably, I do have a little bonus clip. I think I'll post that Monday where, you show, where I show you guys how to make your own Frito burritos. Because I went on a Frito burrito fest past weekend. So I'll show you guys how to make your own Frito burritos. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Everyone have a good night. Bye.